What's going on fellas? My name is Gray Madden and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a hunting bow. The design for this bow is based off of a Eastern Woodlands Indian bow and it's going to have a length of 66 inches long and a draw weight of between 45 and 50 pounds. At that draw weight the bow is capable of taking pretty much any North American game. We're going to be making this bow from a 1x2 red oak board that can be pr purchased at pretty much any Lowe's or Home Depot. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so like I said, we're going to be using a 1x2 red oak board to make this bow. You can't go buying any red oak board at Lowe's and hope it works though. You have to choose a quarter sawn board, which means that the grain of the wood runs straight up and down the board. You want to make sure you pick one that doesn't have the grain veering from one side of the board to the other, or your bow is liable to break on you. You'll probably have to dig through several boards before you find one that's suitable for a bow. It's better to invest time in finding the right material than to spend time and energy on something that's subpar. Based on my previous experience, I know that the bow doesn't have to be more than about 5 8 inches thick. So here I'm removing some of the material with the planer to make the process go faster. You don't need a planer to make this bow, however. You can accomplish the same task with a hand planer, draw knife, or a rasp. Now that my board is the correct rough thickness, I'm going to go ahead and cut it to the length. Now I could do this all in one fell swoop, cut it 66 inches long with one cut, but in my particular case, my grain gets a little bit wonky towards each end of the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up a few inches from one end of the board and make a cut where the grain starts to get a little bit better. Then I'm going to flip the board around, measure my 66 inch length, and make a second cut to get the board to the right length for the bow. That way the grain is running nice and straight up and down throughout the entire length of the bow. Now that we've got the correct thickness and length for a bow, we're gonna go ahead and lay out the profile and cut it to shape. The profile is not very complicated. The bow's got half inch knocks at either end and it just, it's a straight taper out to the full width of the board. 21 inches up from either end of the bow. So you just mark your knocks and you measure up 21 inches and you draw that slanted line and that's your profile. If you're having trouble visualizing this you can bounce on over to my website madmanman.com. I've got a link below and I've got written instructions and drawings there. So go check those out. Once you got the layout drawn on your board go ahead and cut it to shape. I'm going to be using a bandsaw here because I've got one at my disposal but if you don't, don't fret. You can always use a draw knife, rasp, hand plane, whatever you've got. Alright, now that we got the profile of the bow cut to shape, we're going to go ahead and glue little wedges to the back of the bow at either end to create our knock. Now the reason why we're making knock of this design instead of cutting a knock into the end of the bow like a normal long bow or recurve is because our bow ends are so narrow they're only half inch wide which doesn't give us enough meat to go cutting our knocks into the bow and we have these narrow bow ends to reduce mass at the end of the bow which in turn creates a higher velocity for your arrow so that's the thought process behind that we will be gluing these little wedges made from scraps. We're just going to be gluing them on with super glue. Okay, so now I've got uh, got the knocks glued on either side here. My next step is to start tillering this down, uh, which is the process of removing wood so that the bow bends evenly on both the upper and lower limbs. Uh, there's two stages to this process. The first one is floor tillering, which is where you just take the bow stave and you put one, you grab one end and put the other end on the ground and you bend it and you just look at the curvature of the wood on the lower, on the lower limb. And this is just what you do in the very early stages uh, to give you an idea of what you're up against. And doing this, I can see that I need to remove some from the uh, middle section of the limb right around in here on, uh, on both sides. The style of tiller that we want is a D 
So the handle in the middle here is going to bend a little bit and the middle section of the limb is going to bend the most and then the last about six or eight inches of the limb shouldn't have hardly any bend at all. Uh, should be barely straight. I use a powered hand planer to do the bulk of the wood removal for the tailoring process because I'm blessed enough to have one. But if you don't have one of these, it's perfectly acceptable to use a, you guessed it, draw knife, hand planer, rasp, or whatever you've got. Now during the tailoring process, it's very tempting to take off a lot of wood in an effort to hurry the process along, but that is a surefire way to ruin a perfectly good bow. I encourage you to slow down, take your time, remove just a little bit with each pass and check it every time just to ensure that you don't ruin a lot of hard work. Slow and easy does it when it comes to the tailoring process. Here I'm using my power planer to remove most of the wood but I'm hitting it up with an orbital hand, san hand sander uh, every couple passes to keep the wood smooth throughout the entire process. Once you're done with floor tillering, you're going to want to move to your tillering stick, which I made mine from a 2x4. I've got a notch cut out from the end to allow your bow to nestle into it. And then I cut notches every 2 inches along the edge of the 2x4 to slip the bow string in. And you use your tillering stick in conjunction with the bathroom scale to tiller your bow. The bathroom scale is there to gauge the draw weight of your bow. When you're tillering, it's important never to draw the bow past its intended final draw weight or you'll produce excessive set in your bow, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So you slap the bow on the tillering stick, draw it, and step back and take a look at the curvature of the limbs and see where you need to remove material from. Uh, you're going to want to use two strings for this process. One's going to be a long string for the initial stage, and then once you get to a certain point, you can use your regular length bow string. Alright, once you get your bow tilted to your desired draw weight, you can go ahead and start the finishing process. First, you're going to want to sand it down with some 120, 220, something in that range to clean up any of the tool marks that are left over from building the bow, and then you can start your finish. Here I'm going to be using a leather die, just because I have it kicking around the shop and I like how it looks on this wood. But you can use whatever finished material you want, whether it be a die, a stain, or you can leave it natural and go with a natural finish. Whatever appeals to you should work perfectly fine. So just go ahead and apply your desired finished material. And then we can move on to the top coat. The clear coat or the top coat is probably the most important part of the finishing process because this offers the bow protection against humidity and moisture in the air. You can use pretty much anything out there. All the options are acceptable for a bow, whether it be a varnish or teak oil or what have you. Just make sure that you apply enough coats to get the job done. Here I'm going to be using a water-based clear coat. And I'm going to apply three coats, which should be sufficient to give it the protection that it needs. Now, with the finish done, the final thing that we have to do is make a handle for the bow. There are many different ways to do this, and the step is completely optional. The Eastern Woodlands Indians actually didn't even put a handle on their bow, generally speaking. With that said, I'm going to add one to this bow to provide my hand a little bit of extra comfort. I'm going to start out by cutting a piece of toolbox lining three inches wide and long enough to wrap around the bow two times. I'm going to secure that toolbox lining with Super 77 3M spray adhesive. Now once I wrap that around the bow, I'm going to come behind with some twine and put two layers of twine. I'm going to wrap it around the, wrap it around the bow and around the toolbox lining and go up and down it and that's going to be my handle. Once again there are a thousand different ways to go about it and it's completely acceptable to forego this step entirely so do whatever makes you happy. Alright that about does it for this project you should be ready to put a bowstring on and shoot some arrows.
thanks for watching and be sure to check out my other videos and my website madmanmadden.com thank you